So let's look at what your bouncing balls might look like here. Um, and here's an example. Uh, so these two balls are bouncing around. We got the big ball, we got the small ball, and they are having a blast, all right? Um, so let's talk about what we've done so far, okay? We have uh, created a ball class, right? And inside that ball class, we have six private variables or state variables, right? They describe the state of the ball, you know, the position of the ball, the current velocity of the ball, and the current size of the ball, okay? We created a constructor. So this ball is a cookie cutter, right? It's a class. And it's also thought of as a new data type, okay? And my ball and big ball are instances, right? Are objects, and they're also thought of as maybe variables of that data type, right? Um, and so if we're, what we do is we created two variables of type balls or two instances of the ball class, okay? And then in setup, what we did was we initialized them. Okay, just like we initialize variables in setup, we're now just initializing a ball in setup. It's just that a ball has many variables inside it, right? They have all these state variables, six, right, to be exact. And so what we do is we pass in the values that we want to initialize these private variables to in a constructor. So we form a constructor that takes in values that can be used to set each of our private variables and that's what we're doing here we're passing it in and this one was called like init center x right and so with over two gets passed in for that and then boom we are able to set that to our center x of our class okay really cool right so we're able to initialize our balls and then we're able to draw our balls update our ball's position, and check for these collisions, okay? So we're kind of on our way to having the uh, ball be used by anybody, right? They can use it uh, pretty pretty easily, and, and it should be able to work, and so we can give it to people in our company, and when we give it to them in our company, we say, uh, you have to call draw ball on it and update position and check for collision. But then, you know, this seems a little silly, right? Like at the point that we're drawing and we're updating and we're checking collision, we're always doing that, right? We're just not a time when we don't do all three of those things together, right? So why don't we just have an update and then have those methods be internal to the class, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, maybe, we could just say my ball update. Oh, <laughs> that, that's what happens when you hit F11, right? My ball update, all right? And then what happens inside update is the moving of the ball, the collision detection, and the... Uh, flipping of the velocity in the case that uh, in the case that we we have a collision and the drawing right the drawing of the ball why don't we just do all three of those things and then when we create a ball we'll just say hey update yourself ball and the ball will update itself and it'll do all of those things so then we can you know use that same ball and modify it for other types of balls and things like that um, and every time their update might be different than this ball's update. We'll get to that. That seems like it is getting a little crazy. Okay, so let's do this update thing real quickly. Um, and if you didn't do the last last part of last assignment, uh, you can you can actually quickly crib it from here. But I I get the feeling most of you got it. So update is just gonna see have a sequence and call these other three functions. Okay, so we're gonna have a ball update. And again, it's gonna be void because we have, uh, we're not returning anything, okay? And we can come up with something to return eventually. But we're updating this, okay? Void, public, update, right? Um, did it not like update? Is update a key return to a public void update? Ah. 
public void update, right? And our update would uh, just call draw. Oh, draw ball, sorry. Um, and then it would call update. Is it update ball? Uh, uh, this dot, uh, move ball, update ball, this dot, um, let's find out what it is. You could do a quick draw ball, update position, okay, update position, okay, and we're finally going to check collisions. Okay, so this ball, this particular ball is drawn, it updates its position, and it checks for collisions. Okay, um, and now this becomes even more trivial. So we're going to say my ball update and big ball update, and that's it. Update yourselves, and let's go. Let's keep on going. You know, how, you know how to update your cells, you know how to deal with collisions, you know how to do whatever, do whatever you need to do when you need to draw yourself, and then let's go to the next frame. So this is what our program turns into. Remember how obnoxious our program was before? Now we're literally creating a ball. Do I have a ball here? I must, right? We're literally creating a ball giving it a position, an initial velocity, and a, <laughs> don't want to focus, and an initial velocity, and a, uh, and a something else. Oh yeah, a, a, a height and width, and then we're letting it go, and it's going ad nauseum on its own, not ad nauseum, this is the wrong word, I'm just using wrong English words for things. Uh, it's going ad infinitum, ad nauseum, jeez. Uh, ad infinitum on its own. Um, so yeah, so now if we hit play, it's the same deal. One final thing that's kind of interesting is since we're only calling update from outside of that class, those other methods can be private. We're not only being called internally in the class, right? Um, so our draw ball can be private. Our update position can be private and our check for collisions can be private, and our one public method could be update ball, all right? We could try to do that real quickly. It could be kind of fun. Uh, so we'll make this a uh, private, and we'll make this private, and we'll make this private, okay? And now that's actually good because we wouldn't want someone, you know, accidentally calling update position 10 times and then having this ball jump, right? That wouldn't, that would be different. If they called update position 10 times and draw, it might have the ball jump, right? And that wouldn't be good. What we do want maybe is if they want to change how fast the ball's going, maybe we want a setter to allow them to do that while this thing's in motion. But we could decide that later. For now, I should probably hit save, right? Remember, you're saving your stuff. Um, and we hit play, and it's doing the same thing, right? It's bouncing around. Pretty cool. All right, so we'll answer a few questions, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to try to uh, do something wild.